Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take and make a T weld. In our last video, I showed you how to make an L weld, and that is one that's right on the corner or a lap corner weld on the side. You could call it whatever you want, but basically it's an L weld is the technical term for it for most purposes. Some people would just call it a corner weld. Now, this one is going to be in the center of a piece of bar stock, and I need to take and scarf that center. We are going to scarf that center of that bar stock by pulling out and thinning down material to where we create kind of a nub and we pinch that material out. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like now. So I've already marked this piece to have a center punch mark at the right, at the middle of the piece of bar stock. And we're gonna hammer on just the edge of it with a rounded face hammer to take and pull out a tab that is approximately one inch wide and we thin out a toe of a scarf. Now that one inch wide, that roughly translates out to roughly 25 mil. If you're over there across the pond or in the great land of Canada. So there you go. So we've pulled out a little bit of a scarf there. That is just using a rounded faced hammer. You could use a ball peen, or you could also use a cross peen hammer. Do not make an attempt to try to clean this up a whole lot, make it all smooth and shiny. We want that to actually be kind of rough because it needs to get, it needs to kind of grip the other piece. You could also use the corner of your cross peen to draw a piece out, or if you have a cross peen of the right correct width, you could pull it out that way as well. This is just a round hammer I use for bowl work sometimes, and it had approximately the right radius on there, so that's what I used. So now we're gonna go ahead and set this piece over here off to one side. The next part that we need to do is I'll turn this on this blower here for us. The next part we need to do is we need to take and prep the other piece. The way we're going to do that is we're actually going to upset just a bit of material by rounding off the square corners. So that's gonna push back a little bit of material. And then we're going to take and fan it out to meet that depression in the other piece. So that's what we're looking for there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this piece of material. It's good and hot. Bring up another forging hammer here, my main forging hammer that I usually use. Shut off that air there. And we're gonna knock the corners in. We're gonna let it spread in width, and that's fine, in thickness. We're just trying to knock the corners in to bring this to a point. And then we're gonna take and cross peen this tip of this piece straight out. You can also do this if you need to. You can also do this peening or whatever by using the edge of the anvil and just kind of give it some stair steps. Again, anything to take and give it some little bit of grip is going to help it kind of set that weld. But now that should take and fit fairly decently with a little extra thickness there to spare our pocket. If it doesn't, go ahead and fan out the piece a little bit more. You will get a better result. So we're going to just work it in like that. So it's going to sit on top and it's going to be worked in. That toe of that weld is going to be worked right in and that thickness will span out and fill the rest of this void. So now we can go ahead. I feel confident now we can go ahead and put this piece in the fire. You want to make sure the toes of your scarfs are pointed up like on the T portion of the weld. We want that toe of that scarf pointed up so it doesn't burn off in the fire before the rest of the piece gets up to a weld. And now we'll just heat this up. You want to bring your fire up to the temperature that you want your steel to be for welding. And if you notice, I am not using flux. Now this is my own steel. I usually do a lot of flux, fluxless welding unless I am having problems or I need to blend in the toes of the scarf. I'll use a little bit of flux on the toes of the scarf and that's all that's needed. If you're welding mild steel to a high carbon steel bit or wrought iron to a high carbon steel bit, um, well not wrought iron, but if you're doing mild steel to high carbon or high carbon to high carbon, 
they tend to like to have a bit of flux um, in the weld. So you will want to take and make sure that you go ahead and flux those joints. But for mild steel or wrought iron, you will not have to take and worry about that. You can just bring the pieces naturally up to a welding heat and uh, get them to stick. So at this point, I'm also going to, my fire is almost where it needs to be. I'm going to shut off the airflow. At this point, you also want to take and make sure that the piece that is to go on bottom is pointed up. So again, we want to lay it down and we can slap the other one on top. So that means the one on top needs to already be in the correct orientation to save time. If you are not comfortable with forge welding yet, you may want to practice this through a few times and that can be very, very handy to you. So we're almost up to that welding heat. I'll take it up a little extra high on this one just to ensure that we get it. I'm gonna take, grip the piece that we're gonna lay on the anvil with my flat jaw tongs. I'm gonna grab the piece that I'm going to put on top with my box jaw tongs. Out we go to the anvil, let it stick, and it wasn't fast enough again. So we're going to take a, go ahead and take another heat on this and we're going to get another weld here. It wasn't fast enough. I shouldn't have went around like this. I should have just come out from the fire like so and stick these together. If I would have came out of the fire like so, that would have welded in just fine. But because I was not fast enough, it did not weld. Now I'm leaving that intentional mess up, that's what I'm calling it anyhow, in this video for a reason. A lot of you all out there, when you fail to make welds, you're failing to make the weld because you're taking too long to get it to the anvil. And that is the one and only problem that you're actually having. A lot of you are thinking, man, I just can't weld worth to save my life. And really what it is, is you're just taking too long to get the piece to the anvil. So the faster you work, the better off you'll be. You want the pieces positioned fairly close together in the fire. This will help you out greatly. We're coming up to a welding heat now. I'm going to try this again. Here goes attempt two. We only have a few seconds to take and get this up to a weld. Get this out and weld it. So here we go. not weld. Try again. So we'll take that up to an extra high heat and we'll do it that. That time the piece was not hot enough. So when you see that, again, I'm trying to rush it for the camera here, and this is leading to mistakes. This is another good point to point out. If you're having mistakes like this, you may want to make sure that you're not being distracted by other things or other means, because that could be causing a problem of you not being able to get your weld. Now we're getting a few little sparkles here because of the extra airflow. I'm going to pull this piece out, and we're going to go at it again. This time she should weld. There we go. That was the right timing. It felt right. Now I'm putting the piece back in the fire kind of at a diagonal and then I'm going to cover it with coke. I want this to be covered with coke and bring the fire back up to a full welding heat. So again, even in demonstrations like this, I'm letting this be in the demonstration because I want you guys to see what it actually takes to improve your skills. And now I've been forge welding now for a decade. Um, and yeah it's, yeah, it's been about a decade. My first year, I never even tried it or attempted it because you know I just figured I was horrible at it. Couldn't get it done and uh, you know, it wasn't until my second year in blacksmithing, now that I've been doing it for 11 years, uh, that I actually got my first forge weld down and I really started practicing it. 
but this just goes to show you that it is a difficult thing. It can be a difficult thing to do if you get the steps out of order, you get distracted, you get too much air in your fire, you burn your pieces up. There's a lot of variables that'll go into it that'll cause you problems and knowing how to overcome those is important. So we're going to weld in that toe and that back toe, that back scarf is not welded in enough because the anvil sucked the heat out of it. So we'll throw a little flux on there and I'll put that toe down in the fire. But when I come out of the fire with the next heat, what I'll do different is I'll flip it upside down and then hammer on it because we want to weld in that top toe a little bit, that top scarf. Again, keep it, keep it covered, keep your metal covered, not only to insulate it so it heats quicker, but also to keep oxygen from it. Remember, if you can see your metal, the oxygen can see your metal. As we get closer to heat here, I'm going to back off the heat, just ever so slightly. Still not too bad in 11 minute demonstration here on YouTube. So now I'm going to bring it out of the fire and flip it. I'm going to work in that toe, that scarf a little bit. That's going to make me happy. And now I'm going to work the top of the scarf a little bit. Work that top scarf just a little bit. I'll put that down in the fire. This thing is welded at this point. What I'm doing here, what you're seeing me do here, is I am trying to blend in the toes of the scarf. So with that being said, I can switch to a much lighter hammer too at this point, which I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to this little lightweight cross peen. It's maybe an eight ounce hammer. And I'm going to peen out those, those scarfs, if you will. Out we go. That's going to help blend those in just by pinning, peening them out. And since I've took the time to flux that, it's helped protect that a little bit. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to get this, take time to get this squared back up and then I'll have to continue to clean out and scarf out those joints. You want to leave a good bulk of material in this piece in order so you can peen out those little wings and get a smoother scarf joint together. Um, you really want to take and have that. And again, if you see an area that's not quite taking, do not be afraid to sprinkle on just a little bit of flux in the areas that aren't quite taking. And then put it back in the fire for another welding heat. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you is when you're just starting welding, don't weld in public and don't get distracted. If you weld in public and you get distracted, you will regret it each and every time. I make this look fairly easy and simple and I talk about it being a simple process, but when you are learning how to do this, it's very difficult. It's really hard on a beginner to learn this um, and be confident in making that weld. So save the demonstrating of your welding capabilities until much later on when you're very confident with your material and how to take and get your welds. That's my best piece of advice I can give you on that, and it should help you pretty greatly, I would say. Again, all that peening there that I'm doing is just more or less to take and help disguise welds. and you can take it as far and as long as you want. And I'm just straightening this out because that's good enough. You guys get the point. I will probably spend another 
two, probably another five to ten minutes getting this weld to where I want it to be on both sides. But that's okay. You know, that's with heat times. I don't need to make you guys stick around to watch that. But there you go. There's your T-weld. There's it on the back side. It's blended nicely on the back side, but it's got a little, little more work on the front side to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and comment what you thought down below. And let me know in the comment section, obviously. <coughs> and uh, if you did find this video helpful and you want to take and support the channel, a great way of doing that is sharing this around with your friends. If you did find it helpful, that will gr I greatly appreciate that. That really does help out um, this channel grow. And as this channel grows, it allows me to take and make more content and things like that. And if you would like to take and support us financially here at Christ Center and Ironworks in any sort of way, a great way of doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com and doing, uh, you know, maybe consider purchasing an ebook or a digital download over there. Uh, either way, either way of support greatly helps us out and we greatly appreciate you for that support. So without further ado, I'm going to get back to forging here. I'm going to finish up this little bit of a forge weld. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.